Welcome back. In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to have potent processors and products from the laptop to the desktop to your hip pocket. Next. I'm out of practice, clearly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, geeks and whatever alike. You hear some kids in the background. That's because we're all pretty much kids here at Hot Hardware. But welcome back to the uh, to the Hot Hardware Two and a Half Geek live stream. I'm Dave Altavilla, and with me, as always, is the effervescent Marco Chapetta. How you doing, brother? Don't know if I would describe myself as effervescent, but I'm okay. <laughs> You're okay. That's good. Good to be okay. And uh, we have the rascally Ryan Whitwam with us. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good. <laughs> and and I did pronounce your last name right because we haven't had you on the show much. Did uh, I say yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I I've been on podcasts where they consistently uh, mispronounce my name at every opportunity. So you know, you, you know, you're already ahead of the curve. Ah, cool, excellent. I like being ahead of the curve. Ryan is uh, part of our editorial staff here at Hot Hardware. He's uh, also a freelance uh, tech editor general smart guy around the web he's published in a number of publications other than the hh but uh, good to have you with us here he is uh, one of our resident experts on the mobile scene uh, but he also uh, digs into pc and is actually you're building yourself a an intel 13th gen raptor lake powered or you already built yourself one, yeah yeah, I just, uh, desktop. yeah, just, just, yeah. Uh, just finished it a couple weeks ago <clears throat> Beautiful. We'll get into mm -hmm. that uh, shortly because we're going to be talking that uh, as well as uh, laptop uh, technologies. Right, Marco? What have you been uh, tinkering with lately? I have been tinkering with, and I can finally say it, um, RT RTX 40 series mobile and, and uh, 13th gen mobile processors. We just had our review published yesterday of the Blade 16. And I had a really powerful MSI notebook arrive on Saturday as well that I'm going to dig into right away. Excellent, Smithers. I've been playing with the OnePlus 11 5G that is here. Um, Brian has been playing with that as well. And as you can see over my shoulder here, that would be a an Alienware. Oh, geez, I'm forgetting what version. I think it's R15. Alienware Aurora. I think it's R15. I believe. I'm not sure exactly. But... It is also 13th gen powered as well as RTX 4090 powered under the hood and a new cooling solution, new cooling system, uh, dual radiator, dual 120 millimeter fan radiator, larger radiator now for uh, better thermal dissipation and um, and more fans and def you know, definitely re-architected airflow. So I'm digging into that. And uh, it will be interesting to see how this platform has evolved for Dell because uh, it's, it's been challenged in spots. I've always liked it. Some folks have thought that the thermals could have been better. And I think that sort of stemmed from the, uh, the radiator size that they hadn't accommodated in the machine before, but they have gone to that extent now with, uh, with a larger rad for the, uh, AIO cooler. So that will be cool to check out, but I, I do not have any reports for you yet. Um, and then the other thing we're working on, which we'll touch base on later in the segment, uh, we have Miriam also ringing out the Galaxy S23 Ultra and some benchmarks with uh, Snapdragon 4 Galaxy, which is a little bit different than Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that is in the OnePlus 11 Pro that uh, Ryan and I are looking at um, a little bit faster. So that'll be an interesting comparison. We'll talk about that shortly as well. Oh, boys, we got all kinds of stuff going on, huh? <laughs> Lots of good stuff, though. I got to tell you, um, assuming we're going to get into the PC first. Um, yes. This this generation of gaming laptops, holy crap, what an upgrade. It's 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 pretty crazy uh, across the board, monstrous performance boosts. So without further ado, why don't we uh, why don't we dive into that first since you teed it up and um Talk about the Razer Blade 16, which is probably, um, let me see if I can drop this into the chat. Here's the link Linkaroo. Um, uh, this is probably one of the uh, more sought after uh, gaming laptops in the market, Razer Blades series. 
have always done well uh and with consumers and you know razor is a gaming brand obviously a, a juggernaut gaming brand gaming uh laptop brand especially um marco you you looked at a configuration with uh, 13th gen uh 13900 something under the hood i think and then an rtx 4090 gpu mobile class gpu uh that uh is a serious config 13950 hx to be exact 5.5 gigahertz boost and uh, a geforce rtx 4090 with 16 gigs of gddr6 ram i mean decked out 32 gigs of uh, ddr5 ram and two terabyte ssd holy mackerel that's a lot of firepower um i imagine it's fast i hope the thermals and uh, acoustics are in line but uh tell us what you thought so I think it's an I think it's an awesome machine. So the, the Blade 16 is a new form factor for Razer. It's it's using, as its name suggests, a 16 inch display, but it's got really tiny bezels all around. So the form factor is just barely larger than a, a typical 15 inch uh, gaming notebook. So you know, Razer actually claims like the most gaming performance uh, per uh, forget, like per volume. I forget how they how they worded it, but whatever. It's a crazy powerful sub 20 millimeter. GeForce RTX 4090 and a 13, uh, 13th gen Core i9 13950HX. So 24 cores, 32 threads, boost up to 5.5 gigahertz. Um, not the absolute top end 13th gen chip, but way up there on the list. So if you factor in the entire platform, though, not only do you have the faster GPU, but you have faster GPU memory. Yeah. You have more cores and higher clocks in 13th gen mobile chips plus higher clock ddr5 than any previous gen notebook and this machine's using dual pcie gen 4 ssds right so across the board more bandwidth all around um razor's also done you know put a significant focus into the cooling in the notebook so what you'll see right if you come look at the numbers first of all aesthetically it's my kind of machine very clean it's basically matte black all around no venting visible anywhere except on the bottom. And there's some fan grills on either side of the keyboard. But other than that, not gaudy at all like a typical gaming notebook. You could easily have this in a boardroom or a game room. Just really good looking machine. But the numbers are insane, right? So huge performance gains in terms of the CPU tests. You know, speedometer, Geekbench, PC Mark, top of the charts, fastest notebook we've ever tested. And mm. in the game, in the game tests, blows the 3080 Ti, the previous flagship, out of the water. Some tests, you know, 25, 30, 47 percent better, right? Oof. So just massive, massive upgrade. It's 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 pretty nuts. So um, I want to step back on a couple of things. You mm -hmm. said, you said dual pci express gen 4 ssd so they had a raid zero gen 4 setup in there. no it, it wasn't in raid it's just dual drive so like if you're if you're running your games off a second drive it's not you know competing with your os drive apologies cool. yeah. for sophie singing right next to me i can't mute right that's now. all right sophie <laughs> sophie always adds a little bit of effervescent yeah. entertainment in the background just like you that's good stuff <laughs> um and uh okay so there's that and then and then i noticed the mini led specs on the display that sounds like a delightfully yeah. uh, crispy display yeah lo lots more to talk about actually like with the machine so lots of cool stuff so the display definitely a standout feature it's got a, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio mini led backlit but what's cool about this display right racer calls it a dual mode display so you can do fhd plus at 240 hertz so 1920 by 1200 at 240 hertz or mm. UHD plus. So 3840 by 2400 at 120 hertz. And yeah. it's super bright up to a thousand nits. Just it's it's really a it's a beautiful display. Less than three millisecond response time. Um, it, just it's very responsive, very attractive. Just a good looking display for sure. Razor you, does know how to set up a config. Go ahead, Ryan. I'm sorry. That uh, that that GPU probably can actually hit like 240 frames in some games if you run it in that mode. That's actually pretty. That's pretty interesting. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, if you're at at, at four, you know, at, at UHD plus, you're probably not going to hit 240, and maybe in some older traditional raster games, not with like modern titles with ray tracing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but you know, flip on DLSS and you can get close. You know, there were some F1 2022 numbers in the piece. I think it was in the triple digits at, at 4K, if, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, it was definitely, I think it was like 99 FPS average native or 94 FPS average native. So okay. the gaming performance is, is absolutely stellar, right? But in, in terms of other aspects of the machine, the audio is good. The only real issue I had is with the touchpad. It's so big that you actually like can't have your hand centered on it. If I had my hand centered on the touchpad and I was trying to click, I wasn't going far enough into the left or right click zone. So I had to like move my hand a little, but really minor nitpick. It's a beautiful glass touchpad. And like in terms of thermals and acoustics, it's not the coolest machine or the quietest gaming notebook. But considering it's one of the smallest with this kind of horsepower, it's it's really not out of the realm of other gaming you know, of other powerful gaming notebooks. It was like fifty five and a half decibels, you know, on the on the sound meter, and something like uh, just under one hundred and sixteen degrees F on the skin temp. But what's really cool is this machine pulls air in through the keyboard. So like even if you're gaming for an hour, like I ran the three D Mark stress test for twenty five iterations, so the machine was really heated up. If you put your hand over the WASD keys, it's pulling air through, so it keeps your hand cool. You don't actually, it it, it cools your hand, doesn't warm your hand. It's really, it feels good to actually game on the machine. So lots of smart innovations and setup. Just if you got the money for a machine this powerful, it was this configuration we tested was on pre-order. Actually, when it goes on sale today for $42.99, so not cheap, mm. but man, mm. what a machine. So nice. 42.99 definitely isn't cheap uh 55 db of acoustics definitely isn't quiet but that's as you noted yeah you know, it's kind of as expected from a gaming machine typically when we are a gaming notebook typically when we when we measure these things anytime you get up above like 50 51 db that's when it starts you know what i would call racket level but i don't know a gaming notebook with that kind of horsepower that doesn't make some racket um and so yeah that's kind of as expected um interesting on the benchmarks and you know i think one of the things that nvidia was challenged on when they you know made performance claims on the desktop side of things was that hey you know how many x performance lift over the previous gen and did that and uh, were those dlss3 numbers you know with the uh, DLS3 super uh, up, you know, upscaling technology in the mix that's giving them part of that lift. But then you look at on the mobile side, the pure rasterization numbers without DLSS3 and um, even without RT on, and the lift is huge. Chris, I don't know if you can throw up. I think I saw Tomb Raider, some of the lift there was looking really good. And F1 2022 looked really good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's just pure rasterization, no DLSS involved. And look at that jump. <laughs> yeah, so like, well, go ahead, Ryan. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so does the uh, does the keyboard feel any any different than other Razer keyboards? Like if they if it's like vented underneath to get air and does it like, does it flex un unusually? No, it didn't. It actually felt, you know, if I don't have the machine side by side, but based on my recollection, because I just reviewed the, the 17 a few months ago, it, it was essentially the same keyboard. Like it felt the same. It didn't have a, a different vibe at all. <clears throat> and there's really minimal flex across the whole machine. It, it feels premium and super solid throughout. So it's not super heavy. It's only six pounds, but it does not feel like they skimped on materials at all. It, it, it feels really premium throughout. And it has a little air conditioning blowing up into your palms. That's <laughs> your saying. It's, it's really cool. cool. Or now, you know, pulling like, in you, from your palms. <clears throat> the, the cooling, though, like the GPU, despite being so much more powerful than the previous gen, I, I think the highest I saw the GPU get was like 70C. It wasn't crazy. The CPU, really? however, so the CPU is a different story. If you go to the Razor Blade 17 review, you'll see the Alder Lake chip in that bigger form factor didn't quite throttle nearly as much and didn't hit that 100 C, um, you know, thermal junction peak on this machine, it will absolutely hit hundred C. So the CPU and it's designed to do this. And everyone's like, Oh, it gets too hot. You're not cooling a, a 24 core Raptor Lake S in a, in a 20 millimeter notebook and keeping temps away from that thermal, you know, thermal junction max. But 
even with the, the, the wild swings in frequency, like PC Mark, Speedometer, Geekbench, Cinebench, it's the fastest single and multi-threaded. So yeah. it's just it's super fast. I think I think thermal design, um, you know, uh, th thermal design methodologies from many of the gaming laptop manufacturers these days are allowing uh cpus and occasionally gpus in this case it's not the case which i mean that's an impressive thermal uh you know uh, limit on the gpu but on the cpu side especially they're allowing you know the the cpus to scale up to maximum peak and hit that and then throttle a little bit down it's kind of like by design just to allow you know the most instantaneous you know performance they can get out of the chip kind of thing is that is that fair? I've I've seen that with Alienware stuff as well lately, and it seems to me that that's a that's a trend. Hey, let it let it let it spike up and do its thing. That's exactly what's happening. Get get mm -hmm. yeah. maximum performance that thermals will allow. When you hit that peak, cool it off, and then when you have thermal headroom again, spike it back up. So yeah. now, so Chris, per perfect segue, Chris. So Attaboy, here, Chris. <laughs> if you look at at the CPU frequencies here in three D Mark where you're not actually like hammering the cpu with a multi-threaded constant workload everything's fine cpu only gets to like 80 something or maybe 90 some i can't really read it from here gpu right around 70 and cpu frequencies are you know they're not completely flat but there's not these wild swings chris can you scroll up a little to the pc mark data pc mark cpu test at the very top that you can see how much more it swings when there's, you know, multi-threaded workloads and the CPU gets to heat up all the way, right? So nice, yeah, good stuff by design there. Um, anything else on that? Um, what, what are your what are your general thoughts now that you've really dug into Nvidia's GeForce RTX 40 mobile series? Um, what are your general thoughts about? about that, you know, I guess, you know, we're going to see RTX 4080, we're going to see RTX probably, a, you know, 4070 iter mobile uh, iteration as well. Um, what are your thoughts about just generally speaking, the, the prospects of NVIDIA's mobile, new mobile GPU lineup versus previous gen, uh, you know, that, that we've seen? I, I think you were going to see <clears throat> in, the, in the same way that the desktop parts were like even you know, the 4070 Ti and 4080 were outclassing the, the previous gen 3090 Ti. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that here too. The, the 4090 is just so much faster than the 3080 Ti mobile that I'm not going to be surprised if, you know, the mobile 4070 beats the previous gen. So we, mm -hmm. we have yet to test, the, you know, the lower end chips, but it's such a big jump in terms of efficiency and performance. It's, it's, you can't help but like it. You just, you mm. can't, you know, now you think, oh my God, so much more powerful battery life is going to suck. Well, no, it actually got, that, yeah. it's, it got better battery life than the blade 17. It's not great battery life. It's a powerful gaming notebook, but the battery life was better than the blade 17. And you know, this one's got much more performance. It's a slightly bigger battery, believe it or not in the blade 16 versus the blade 17, mm. but still battery life's right in the yeah. middle. It's not like, it's not brutal. You know, am I yeah. reading the specs right? That it has a 330 watt power adapter. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not huge. No, it's not. It's well, not huge. So it's, it's using GAN. The GA yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's it, it's normal sized. You know, it's not. Is it nice. like is it like a barrel DC plug or? No, it, it's um, it in... it, it's a proprietary uh, ah, oval okay. shaped plug okay. with three pins in it. But not, yeah, but not USB C. Just looks vaguely. The same. Yeah. It, it, look, it looks like a fat USB-C with pins mm -hmm. in it. <laughs> and you, I don't think you can drive that kind of power through USB-C, right? I'm trying to think uh, what the USB-C spec is. I think like the is. latest standard might do 200 watts. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. It, it but, ain't doing 330 though. <laughs> but we, well, yeah. but we, we will say that, you know, PSU technology, <laughs> uh, power supply technology these days in terms of density, yeah. Power density per per square mm -hmm. millimeter has really jumped up nicely lately. So mm -hmm. it's good that the bricks aren't uh, crazy, you know, big or bulky anymore. 
Yeah. Uh, good stuff. So, good stuff. A co co couple ahead. of quick comments and questions. Steez is saying USB Do 4 does 240 watts. Good to have you, Steez. Didn't see Thank you, Steez. And well we have Tim <laughs> asking, will switching to FHD, uh, if you need more battery life, will it help a lot or matter much? Um, it actually technically could hurt if you don't do anything else because you're going to get higher frame rates. Like if you run a game with higher frame rates, you actually use more power from the GPU. And mm. even though you're running at a lower res, it's still all the same pixels lit up on the display. So if you want battery life on the road, the best thing to do is just use NVIDIA's battery boost and limit your frame rate to like 60 frames per second. And then everything gets to kind of calm down completely. <clears throat> Very cool. I'm trying to think what else I might want to know about this laptop, but it's, um, I mean, the pricing's, Pricing's a little rough at 4,200. What do you, what does that look like comparatively to, I'm trying to think like to some of the more aggressive pricing on previous gen uh, with uh, Alder Lake mobile and RTX 3080 series, 3090 series. So the, the blade 17 that I would looked at, right. Was yeah. 39, was 39 99. Yeah. So there is a premium for, for, and you actually lose a couple of features like no wired ethernet and stuff. Um, but it is a little bit of a premium, but it for the form Displays factor better too. Yeah, you're right. Like a new new technology display, smaller form factor, much more performance. Yeah, there, there's a premium, but if you want the best in a in the smallest form factor, I'd be surprised if anybody beats this machine. Um, <clears throat> now, the MSI notebook that we're going to look at next is six thousand dollars. So, Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> yeah baby <laughs> you know and and i want to see alienware has the the new uh, alienware x16 series which is their thin and light 16 inch um and they did some pretty pretty detailed thermal mojo on that as well that i covered in their ces uh preview um and we haven't gotten that in yet so it'll be interesting to pit uh the alienware machine versus some of these numbers uh both performance acoustics and thermals so um yeah we and Dell, if you're listening, send it. <laughs> Definitely. <You know? clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, good stuff. And and we should probably, let's just mention real quick before we move on, um, some technology that might go well with this machine. And I'm going to drop this link in the chat because Marco, you looked at this. We'll just give it a quick little, little mention here. The Samsung T7 Shield 4 terabyte review, fast, rugged, portable SSD storage strap that sucker into the USB-C port of uh, the uh, Razer, Razer Blade 16, and you probably have some uh, a pretty good storage uh, companion, right? Uh, very good storage companion. So there it is. That, that's how big it is. That's, a you know, pocket a, a, baby. Yep. yeah, a little, little four terabyte SSD right there. Um, so it's actually it, this, essentially the same performance as all the previous T7s that we looked at. A little better sustained write because it has the much bigger cache on here, SLC cache, because the capacity is so big. Um, peak performance is not, you know, it's not, uh, you know, class leading versus other uh, external storage solutions. It's about a, about a terabyte, I'm sorry, a gigabyte per second, uh, both reads and writes, a little higher on reads. But where it really sort of stands out is, you have a nice rugged enclosure and includes cables for, you know, every type of US, USB port. And what I found having tested a bunch of USB-C enclosures is like the Samsung drive just works wherever you plug it in, right? You mm -hmm. plug it in, it reliably works. Whereas like some of the, I tried two USB four enclosures, neither of them, you know, are recognized all the time. Right. Performance is hit or miss. Um, and then I have, um, USB three enclosures that only really work well with the mid range or lower end drives. If you throw like a, uh, like a Samsung nine ninety in it, it, it behaves funny. So if you want decent external storage that just works and you want this super high capacity, 400 bucks for a four terabyte drive, it's actually cheaper than buying a four terabyte SATA drive and an enclosure. I kind of like it. Like this is going to be my, you know, test drive for my Steam library because then I can just move it around real easy. And I'm not going to run out of space and have to delete games like I do on, you know, a uh, one terabyte drive. So I kind of like it. Really cool little drive. Excellent. And and a gig a second read write. What are, what are uh, randoms like with it? Pretty good. Uh... They're they're okay. It was like middle of the pack. I, I'm forgetting the exact numbers in the the Crystal Disk Mark test, but in that regard it's good right 
it's not as good as a faster true NVMe, right? So yeah. if you look at like the X5 with Thunderbolt um, or the A data drive, it's it's the A data drives a little better in terms of writes. It's right there with mm. reads. So mm-hmm. nothing crazy. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. I was just thinking if you could actually run a game library from it, you know, live. I've, I, I, I have been. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay, good. It's got enough enough juice for that. Cool. Yep. Well, there you go. There's the uh, Samsung T7 Shield, uh, ruggedized as well. Um, the other thing we put up, and uh, Ryan, I know you've been dabbling with uh, 13th Gen uh, desktop uh, builds yourself, um, but we checked out Main Gear's uh, sweet little M1, the uh, Main Gear MG1, excuse me, review, a mighty beautiful boutique gaming PC. Uh, it's got the hot hardware uh, logo strapped uh, to the front of it there, and that party too. Uh, you can see Main Gear's new logo there, the little M. Looks like a, uh, uh, what, what am I trying to think? It looks like something space. out of uh, Space Invaders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Great new logo, guys, at Main Gear. And we've known the Main Gear guys for a while. By the way, stay tuned. We're going to be heading down to New Jersey. We're going to build a machine with them, I think. Stay tuned on that. This is a 13th gen machine, uh, RTX 4090. Zach from our team reviewed it, thought it was killer. Um, you know, standard um, AIO liquid cooling, nothing, you know, crazy about it that's super custom. Um, but uh, the usual immaculate main gear build with a, a well designed chassis and well-designed cooling and, of course, impeccable uh, part selection. Um, any comments on that, Marco? And then, uh, Ryan, I want to want to get your take if you think you can beat it. Actually, it had a 4080 in it, excuse me, and not a 4090. <laughs> I, I dig it. Really cool machine. And, you know, you can actually upload your own pictures and have them sort of <clears throat> printed on that front panel where you see that hot hardware logo. That panel's customizable, pops right off. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's not much more expensive than than building your own, but you get you know the warranty, the impeccable wiring, the really nice build quality of main gear, and the potential for customization. So there's there's really not much not to like. Beautiful machine. Yeah, they've got uh, you know the RGB goodness all around. Whether you talk about the fans, uh, the light strips, of course. Uh, look at it does it does look parted now, doesn't it? <laughs> um and uh it is a uh it is a, a, a very cleanly built machine the guys at manga really do a nice job i mean honestly we you know we've worked with them so long over the years they've become good friends but you know it's 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 also because we jones over there <laughs> over their product so much it's it's very very well done ryan what are your thoughts and uh how how did your uh i guess exploration of uh 13th gen desktop build go that might be a good uh, I thing mean, to talk about. I mean, pretty, pretty good. I, I've been doing AMD for a while now. So going back to Intel, there were like there were a couple of things to to pick up on. But mm. um I um I I initially when I put the build together, I I got a um I got a 3070 Ti because I figured like I don't want to spend, you know, the money on, on the 4000 series because like they're all so expensive. And then they announced the 4070 Ti, which I know has kind of like a bad rap for being like not a good value, but like it's really, it's like the only like current gen video card that I, I want to spend the money on because mm. I don't want to get the AMD cards that have like meh ray tracing and I don't want to spend twelve or $1,600 on the 4080 or the 4090. And I've been pretty happy with the 4070 Ti. Um, it, I, I do, um, my, my main monitor is 1440p. I plan to stick with 1440p as long as that is viable. I don't need a 4K monitor. Um, mm. So it can play pretty much everything that I need at native resolution. I uh, usually don't even need to do like DLSS on most titles. Um, so I've been pretty happy with that. Um, the the CPU, um, I kind, I don't know, I might have gone overboard a little bit. I got a 360 mil uh, all-in-one cooler for it. Um, and it stays, it stays very cool. I haven't seen it get anywhere near 100C, uh, even under load. Uh, and I've been overclocking it a little bit. So I'm, you know, reasonably happy with that. On my last AMD chip, um, I forget which one it was. It was uh, not the most recent gen, but like it was pretty easy to get that thing up to like 95, 98 degrees. I even had the whole, I held the whole system like uh, emergency shutdown a few times uh, just because of, of the heat. So, I mean, I wasn't, you know, 
over the moon with that. But I understand like that's just the way CPUs are right now. They're all pushing like the, the thermal envelope. But I, I have been happier with with the 13th gen uh, Intel than I was with my last AMD. Cool, very cool. Yeah, the, the, I, I am, the however, folks... not happy with the SSD. I bought I bought the Samsung 990, and it is degrading very quickly. I'm not happy about that. Oh, really? Did you, did you do the firmware update? Not no. So did they actually release the 990 update? I know they did one for the 980. I think it just came was, out yesterday. Or I, I don't remember if it's out, but it, it's coming. If it's yeah, not no, I'm yet. I'm hoping that'll fix it. Now, so like I mean, in the month, the, like the like month, not even that I've had it, it's gone from 100 to like 92 percent. So that's oh, not wow, great. That sucks. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, interesting. Yeah. I wonder if the yeah, there's there's probably what was it a garbage collection update or something like that, Marco? A, a trim update, better trim update. I know there was. I think there was actually a bug in the firmware, and they first they fixed the 980 the endure, degradation. Endurance. Bug. I'm not sure exactly what it was, though. I I don't want to speak out of turn. Uh, the last okay. I'm I'm seeing <clears throat> it, uh, two days ago, they reported that it's coming sometime yep. this month. Yeah, yeah, but they released gotcha. a 980 update. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh that has been uh, annoying to deal with. I'm just like wondering, like, do I deal with an RMA and have them send me another drive that's just going to degrade? Do I just replace it or? Who knows? Yeah. But if they fix it, yeah. that's fine. I'll, I'll survive. Yeah, but if you're already degraded, I, I RMA that thing. I mean, it's going to stink to yeah, be without think... your machine, but... Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I could, I mean, I guess worst case, like, I can just buy a new a new SSD and, like, <laughs> RMA it and sell the new one they send me. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so, and actually, um, to go down the specs of the main gear rig, just very quickly, because, again, this is just a, a quick stop. We're going to get to mobile very soon here in the second half um geforce itx 4080 one terabyte solid dime uh p41 plus pci express gen 4 ssd solid dime the previous intel ssd division and uh evga supernova 850 watt power supply um just a you know decked out machine msi uh, pro z7 z790 motherboard and 32 gigs of kingston fury uh beast rgb uh with the uh with the bling goodness uh uh, in the uh, in for memory DDR5 memory, so <clears throat> you know Core i9 13900K. What's interesting about this machine and and the performance um, that we were that we showed earlier, Chris. I don't know if you can just throw throw a benchmark graph up when you get a chance. Um, the performance is right there, you know, leading the pack. Like we, sh it's the fastest desktop we've ever tested. Um, and it's it's really puts puts it right up there. This is uh, that speedometer. That's that's okay. Um, but when you when you get to things like uh, <clears throat> yeah, Blender is a good 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 test. Uh, Crystal Dismark. You can see some of our some of our reference machines obviously are in there. Um, test HH test bench machines. But this is the fast fastest pre built we've ever tested um, so far. And so, uh, you know, a 4080 versus some 4090 and 7900 XTX scores there. At any rate, good stuff. The power on this thing, however, the power consumption, this is what's great about this gen is that power consumption, although you think with these huge, powerful GPUs and more powerful CPUs, clearly power management has evolved as well as the, the, the core CPU GPU technology because power consumption is down and chris i don't know if you can throw the power graph up but you can see the draw is right in the middle of the pack of machines <clears throat> you know and some of these are you know older machines with much less firepower uh that are consuming a lot more power than than this current gen machine that is uh you know smoking them in the benchmarks so it's great stuff uh anything uh, else on this before one, one one quick point on power that gets lost when we're talking about 13th gen and even 12th gen depending yep. on the cooler and how the bios is configured in terms of peak power level it can swing wildly like like we're talking like an 80 watt swing so if if the motherboard is not set to just be completely unlocked and allow peak power level um, 13th gen is much more tame than you might think. If you look at my power numbers in the, the CPU review, they're like worst case scenario. The MSI motherboard I use for testing, when you're also using a liquid cooler, it unlocks that chip and it's going to use all the power available and it's going to hit that thermal junction 100C every single time. Like I can't actually overclock 
because of that setup without a much getting a much more powerful cooler for the test break. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. And then, and then to cap this off that good, good uh, pointers there, uh, Marco, uh, to, to cap this off for the main gear MG one. Um, and, uh, then we'll move on to the mobile space. Um, main gear asks 34 99 for this configuration as tested 32 gigs of Ram RTX 4080, 3900 K yada, yada. Um, 34 99 is the, is the, uh, uh, sale price that, that we did pay for our config. And we put, <clears throat> all of the components in a price aggregator and we came up with 3127 so the age old you know hey you know just build it for less you know we, you know, we always get that you know someone comes out of the woodwork with that you know chirp uh, when we put up pre-built machines and i would offer that for a few hundred extra dollars with the absolute impeccable build quality that main gear puts out with the backed up warranty support uh, live support on the phone, um, you know, in warranty. That's a pretty darn good value. Marco, I don't know if you have your thoughts and any thoughts on that, but I was, I was, say, and I I was surprised 30, to see it was that close. Go ahead. I think that 3,500 is including that front panel, the custom front panel as well. Oh, which okay. I think was a couple hundred. This will cut custom, custom front etching. Yeah. Yeah. Like you ask yourself, what's your time worth? If you want to ensure it's built perfectly, and have a warranty is it worth 10 percent? yeah absolutely yeah that's what yeah that's, I, I don't think that i would still be building my own systems at this point in my life if i didn't like doing it me too <laughs> yeah i, I love I, doing I, it I thoroughly too. enjoying it yeah i enjoy it. that's why i do it yeah 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 and 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 we will be down with the main gear folks i think in the coming months probably within the next month or two uh hopefully the weather will cooperate with us to get down there it's a couple of it's a few hour drive to new jersey but we're going to get down there we're going to build probably an mg1 i'm not sure we'll see what what model main gear we build and what platform we build on whether it's amd or intel um but uh yeah we'll be we'll be down there we're going to be looking at their new facility and uh doing some uh some build action with them live which will be fun to see wallace and the gang again so stay tuned should, for that should build an ampere rig <laughs> <laughs> yeah 128 core ampere rig awesome that'd be great there you go <laughs> uh all right well let's move on to uh things with um significantly lower power envelopes and that would be <laughs> yeah. smartphones um and uh ryan you took a look at the one plus 11 5g i am taking a look at the one plus 11 5g i'm going to actually have a little coverage up on forbes whoops i tossed that in the private chat let's put that in the public chat there we go I'm going to have a little coverage up on Forbes shortly with my take on the OnePlus 11 5G. But here is your take on it. The OnePlus 11 5G, we said it was a premium experience with standout value. Um, was that uh, was that a fair headline? Because we we did a little tweak magic on that for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. That's uh, yeah. No, I mean, it, it's um, it's kind of a, a return to form for OnePlus. I think the last couple of years uh, I've been a little... I've been a little nonplussed by their phones, if you can forgive me a pun. Um, oh. <laughs> they, um, they, I, I think, you know, for a while they were focusing on doing like two phones per release cycle, and that hurt them a little bit because they would make an expensive phone, like the flagship that actually had stuff people wanted, and it was like, it was priced like a Samsung phone. And then they would make the cheaper version that was like not even as good as like the pixels that it was competing with. So this time it's kind of like, they're kind of in the middle. The, the, the OnePlus 11 is $100 more than the Pixel 7, but it is it's really good. I mean, it has a couple of advantages over the pixel. If you're not really um, committed to having like the Google software experience, uh, you know, this phone is, is faster. The display is better. It charges way faster. Um, the camera is better than I would have expected from OnePlus. It's not pixel good, but it's, it's honestly, it's good enough that I think most people won't be uh, concerned about it. Um, they have, uh, they, it's, it's another Hasselblad partnership. They, they didn't do this with the 10 T, but this one is, it's another Hasselblad thing. And, and their whole, uh, their whole, whole deal this time is that it's got a two X telephoto camera that has been tuned for portraits. So it imitates some apparently famous Hasselblad lenses that I'm not personally familiar with. Um, but the photos that it takes are, are really good. It has, and it has very good detail. It, um, the, the, the dynamic range is a lot better than I'm used to seeing from OnePlus phones. Um, and the exposure time, it's about half of what OnePlus's phones were last year, which means things that are moving quickly are a little bit easier to capture. 
Um, it's still, you know, uh, like I said, still not as good as like a pixel. Like a pixel, you take that phone out of your pocket, you snap a photo, and nine times out of 10, it's going to be perfect. It's not the case here, but um, it does still do very, very well. Um, and like from a design standpoint, I think it's it's a very handsome phone. Uh, they made the camera module look less ridiculous than it did the last few few versions. That's an entirely aesthetic judgment. Not everybody will agree with me, but I think their phone, like the phones last year, they look like stove. Yeah, they look like stove tops, and I just didn't understand <laughs> why they would do stove that. Top. I never. But the new that one never occurred to me. <laughs> but the <laughs> but ahead. the new one, it's got that like this nice uh, the, like the rounded surround, and the, and that piece of the phone actually is stainless steel. Uh, the rest of it is is aluminum, like most Android phones. Um, but like it's 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 put together really well. It feels almost almost Samsung levels of of refined. Um, and it's got the alert slider, which was missing on the 10T. Very very much of a bummer on that. But I'm so happy to have that back. It's one of the coolest hardware features uh, that OnePlus does. I don't know why other OEMs haven't stolen it because it's just it's just cool. You just you don't even have to wake up the phone. You don't have to look at it. You can just reach in your pocket and like flip the switch to like, you know, either just vibrate or, or silent or, or turn on the ringer. So it's like it's like having the switch on the iPhone, but it's even more functional. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and, and like I said, like the software yeah. is not my favorite. Um, it's Oxygen OS 13. So it's Android 13 under that. Um, but this is we're coming at this after OnePlus was sort of absorbed into its parent company, Oppo. So this is, for the most part, a skin on top of color os like it's it's based on color os which is the software that oppo uses on its phone so it's a little bit different than you may be used to with other android phones like you can see like in the the quick settings area how it like it's very blocky and it has like multiple rows it's sort of it, it, reminiscent of of ios um, and if you look at the color os the version they put on on oppo phones it is even more of that they thankfully you know got rid of some of that um, and it, it doesn't look as much of an I, as as much of an iOS knockoff, but I still don't personally love the style. And they took out almost all of the Material U things. That's Google's new theming engine that they're very into now, where it'll take the colors from your wallpaper and apply them to your your icons mm. and your widgets and your system elements. And uh, this only does that with the icons, and you have to dig into the settings to turn it on. And it just doesn't look great because nothing else really matches the theme. So it's mm. kind of a throwaway feature. Gotcha. Interesting. Well, you know, yeah, that's, and by the way, that was a great synopsis of the phone. I think you're, I think you're on point in, in every uh, aspect. Um, I will say I've been playing with the phone myself. Um, one thing I do notice, and I noticed it in the previous gen, the 10 series, um, the Hasselblad influence in the color science is definitely mm -hmm. uh, prominent. And so one thing, you know, I, I agree that, you know, certainly versus pixel, um, you know, snapping the perfect shot isn't quite as, you know, uh, you know, there, crisp, eminent, you know, whatever, just ready to go. You have to just tweak a little bit more, maybe hit, you know, mm -hmm. tap the screen and get a little bit better focus shot, whatever. But one thing I've always found about pixel is that colors often times seem muted to me. And I do like a little extra pop. Um, Samsung tends to go a little too far with that sometimes Ooh, with his. the oversaturated pop, yeah. right? <clears throat> and um, so OnePlus, and I think with Hasselblad, really has nailed the color science. And so mm -hmm. that's that's what I like about the camera and that. And then the performance um, that we talked that you talked about, I think, is relative to Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that's in this thing. So yeah. you know the camera the camera is responding quicker. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is a is a really nice SOC. Here's the here's some of the the benchmarks. Really nice SOC for Android. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah it took, with took it. the top spot in a lot of a lot of these tests. Um, the like mm. the mm. GPU test specifically, like it, like the the jump is is substantial. Um, mm. in a lot in a lot of those tests. So like, if we get like a little further down to where the GPU stuff is, it will be it will be obvious. But um, but yeah, yeah. I, and 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 importantly. Uh, it stays fast. Like if you take a, like the Galaxy S22 Ultra from last year, it's like the most powerful phone Samsung makes. But if you run a game on that for 15 minutes, the performance drops by 20% easily. Yeah, and on and this phone, it stays completely the same. Like all the way through the stress test we do, it's 20 runs of a benchmark in a row, and it's still just as fast at the end, which I mean, speaks, <laughs> speaks well of OnePlus's cooling design. Okay, yeah. Chris. Here's, what, here's the what, Samsung Chris, here. 
Okay. <laughs> you were really, you were doing some scrolling there, brother. Um, yeah, no, that's the same, that's Samsung degradation in the Galaxy S22. And that frankly was not uncommon with previous mm -hmm. gen uh, Snapdragon thermal solutions that we saw in the marketplace from various OEMs. Um, but this kind of bar that we see in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the OnePlus 11, um, that is beautiful not only is it yeah. a great score at fourteen thousand or change or whatever but didn't didn't budge over 20 minutes after thermal yeah i um i did i did that test on the s23 ultra just recently out of curiosity and it's it's not as bad as the s22 was but it does still drop i don't know eight to ten percent i would say interesting now we'll have to chris i don't know and this is a this is perhaps a great segue we'll have to um I don't know if you can put up on, on the screen, Chris, uh, the Excel sheet with the Galaxy S23 Ultra scores that we have. Um, maybe we can't um, if, if you don't have that set up. But Miriam is working on our Galaxy S23 Ultra review. That will be ready uh, pretty shortly. We just got the phone uh, back at unpacked on February 1st. So it's still in process any day now. Um, that has Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy in it, which is a special bin for Samsung. Out of the gate, they have an exclusive on it, I think, for I don't know how many months. Uh, there you go. Um, and so you'll see that it is indeed faster by a hair versus the OnePlus 11 5G. Um, and so perhaps that aggressive clock speed uh, you know, uh, setting in, in the Galaxy phone is why it degrades a little yeah. quicker. Yeah, I mean, and it's the and it's the it's the single core that the single core number that that is higher. It's like the the multi core is actually the same or like a little bit lower. It's because the the CPU enhancement that Samsung got is a faster clock speed on the prime core, which is like the sort of the separate island away from the other performance cores. So that one goes a little bit faster. I think like 160 megahertz. It's not a huge difference, but it's faster technically if that's what you mm -hmm. care about. Yeah, it might give you a little bit, cer certainly a little bit more snappy performance on bursty yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, they they also said that the GPU is faster. They didn't give any specific metrics on that though. So I mean, I feel like if we have if we have like good numbers for the yeah, pull up graphics. Slingshot, Chris. Can you can you click the next tab? What does Slingshot tell us? There you go. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's faster yeah. by a hair. Yeah, yeah. stay on. Uh, it comes in right below the reference hardware. I mean, that's not bad. So can, can I just jump in for a second? If you look at the yeah, top in that, that chart, so we're not talking about this phone, but the Red Magic 8 Pro is there, and that phone has active cooling. And you mm. see, and that's also Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I think just even though the Prime Core is really the only thing technically clocked higher on the the Snapdragon 8 Gen uh, Gen 2 for Galaxy, I think just because it's, it's specially binned and probably just, you know, you win the silicon lottery, you probably get a little bit better sustained performance on the GPU as well. I'll also point yeah. out that the yellow bar is the graphics test. Right. Yeah. yeah. That that's a mixed test. Chris, uh, how about can you go to um maybe um uh GFX Bench Manhattan? Uh let's look at that. That's usually a good test. There you go. Interesting. Oh, mm. it's kind of neck and neck. Huh. Yep. So one other thing that that faster prime core is gonna get, we talk about it a lot in the PC, is that responsiveness of that fast single thread performance. It's really hard to quantify it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this, I mean, the software could offset this, but the, the, the Galaxy might be really snappy with that higher clock. Yeah, there you go. Go go back to, uh, so Aztec Ruins, that's Vulcan. Go back to, um, G, what was it? What was the other one? 3D Mark Wildlife Un Unlimited. Yeah. So there you go. There's a little bit of an edge for the S23 Ultra over the others. By the way, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 line that you see there is the reference hardware that I benchmarked in Maui at Snapdragon Summit this year, excuse me, uh, last year. Um, and that that phone was tuned pretty hot. And by that, I mean, we got some pretty, pretty strong numbers out of it, but we also saw some thermal degradation <laughs> that frankly, the OnePlus phone doesn't show at all. And that's, yeah. you know, that's indicative of, you know, refined retail ready hardware and uh, that's good stuff. But um, yeah, it, it is pretty cool that like you can use that phone and it doesn't like it doesn't get uncomfortably hot. Every mm -hmm. time I, I play like an intense game on a Samsung phone for any period of time, it just becomes uncomfortable to hold it. Uh, that just that just doesn't happen on the OnePlus phone. Like they do a very good job of wicking the heat away and like keeping it cool. 
Yeah. And the other thing I noticed, let's talk battery life, battery life on this thing. And now I've been using it as a, as a daily driver, our test shows solid performance. Yeah. But I've been using it as a daily driver and, and I would say, and this is 3d Mark uh, PC Mark Android uh, work 3.0, by the way, is always on battery life test. So the screen is always lit and this is 120 Hertz, beautiful OLED 120 Hertz display that, is going to consume more power because it's a high re refresh rate mm -hmm. display, super bright, even though we normalize the, the brightness on it. Um, so, so you see strong upper quad quadrant performance here, but I would offer that mixed usage. Uh, Ryan, tell me if you feel the same way. Mixed usage on off, like you, you would normally use your phone during the day. It's really pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's a two day phone. If you're not, if you're not on it constantly, it, you know, you'd have no problem getting to get into bedtime on day two and plug it in and it'll be charged 20 minutes later. <laughs> like the, yeah, the 80 watt charging is amazing. It's not yeah, as amazing as the 125 you could get on, you know, on the 10 T but like still 80 Watts, it's, you know, almost four times as fast as the pixels. Yeah. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> that that's right. I mean, 80 Watts, I think is, is plenty for most people love the fast charging as well. One thing I will say I do miss personally is that, um, uh, it doesn't have wireless charging on board yeah. and one plus did that for a cost savings because this phone starts mm -hmm. at six ninety nine, And I think as, as we tested with 16 gigs of Ram, by the way, which is yeah. a lot in a phone yeah. and a yeah. 256 gigs of storage, it's seven ninety nine, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, the hundred dollar upsell for double the RAM and double the storage, I would, you know, I would say, you know, maybe that's worth it. I think it's maybe a little bit more worth it this time because the upgrade to 256 gigs of storage also gets you a UFS 4.0 instead right. of 3.1. So it is faster storage as well. Um, you know, and of course there's no micro SD card slot. So if you're going to buy a phone for the long haul, you want to be able to use it for a few years, you know, pay attention how much storage is in it because you know you can't just drop an sd card in like you used to be able to um and you know and uh, oneplus does promise pretty impressive support for this thing i think they are neck and neck now with samsung they do four years of os updates and five of security updates their updates are slower usually than uh than samsung and certainly slower than google but you know being able to buy a phone for you know 700 bucks that is very fast and you know takes decent photos and and looks good and you can use it without being at security risks for the next five years is you know that's good that's about how long i think uh you know a phone like this should last like you should be able to use it for five years yeah there you go and there there's the spec list that chris was trying to show earlier but if we saw a black <laughs> hole sorry about that folks <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah. and it, yeah it has wi-fi 7 which is like kind of fun i guess it's cool that it has wi-fi 7 future proof but Good luck actually finding any any Wi-Fi seven right now, but that is supported in in the Gen two. So other it's phones future, could do this. Yeah, future proof for sure. Uh, routers are coming. Um, th so this is a great spec rundown. Six point seven inch, fourteen forty p uh, OLED screen, one twenty hertz. You can see eight eight and sixteen gigs of RAM, one twenty eight twenty six gigs of storage. Yada yada. Five thousand milliamp hour battery, um, and then <clears throat> um, eighty watt charging. Um, so really just a nicely decked out phone for, for six ninety nine to seven ninety nine. Um, I'm trying to think what else uh, it was interesting about this, but it's, um, it's really, there, there is no oh. pro model coming. This is the pro model in case anybody is oh. un unclear about that. Uh, oh, yeah? one plus one plus just, they decided they, they're just not going to call phones pro anymore. Like this is a pro phone for them. They're so we, don't, we can't hope that. for a pro with, with, yeah. with so don't, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't hold off hoping for the, for the pro model. They tell me that's not coming. Maybe they lied to me. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> what I have heard is that this, you know, is a pro name in all but name or pro phone. Gotcha. In all but name. Gotcha. And actually I know what I was thinking of the sub six 5g performance. Now millimeter wave, it also supports millimeter wave, right? Yeah. I believe it does. Um, does I not don't think it does. No, if there were no millimeter wave, uh, bands on the spec sheet they gave me uh that maybe okay. that's a mistake if they told Snapdragon. you that it does millimeter wave well no that 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 was probably my uh uh aging brain forgetting that but um yeah. the you know the snapdragon 8 gen 2 supports millimeter wave so they didn't mm -hmm. enable yeah, yeah. it in the phone this is yeah, your yeah. sub yeah, six yeah. performance though right here right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that's that's pretty good um 
I mean, uh, the upload is, I tested this on T-Mobile and T-Mobile's upload speeds have gone down a lot from like the earlier 5G days. They, they used to be kind of neck and neck with the downloads, but now they're, you know, they're slower. But 480 down is, is not bad. And I, I used it in some places where I know other phones have had trouble holding on to a 5G signal and, and the OnePlus 11 did, did real well. Um, and it and it is an unlocked phone. There are not going to be any carrier versions of it, so it's not like specifically optimized for any carrier or another. Um, it should just it should it, it it'll, it'll get five G on like an all of the the major U.S. carriers, which is nice. That's something you don't always get. Sometimes you'll buy a five G phone, and even if it, even if it has the right bands, it just doesn't connect to five G on like AT and T because they didn't want to pay for AT and T certification. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is a good feature actually, um, and, and I'm sure millimeter wave was not included in this as a cost savings as well and let's face it these days millimeter waves coming with with more density as as the rollout mm -hmm. continues uh you'll have more access to millimeter wave it's just so limited yeah. right now one yeah, thing i, I mean, will it, say and is it is really expensive to add to a phone like you need you need multiple additional antenna modules like all the yeah. way around the periphery of the phone because if you put your hand over it it doesn't get a signal anymore gotcha yeah oh Great insight there. There you go, folks. Yeah, Ryan is in a, a phone aficionado, in case you haven't noticed. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then the sub six performance that I saw, um, I would say, was in, the most impressive I've seen in my area. Now I have I have the phone on Google Fi right now, and I was pushing north of seven hundred meg down with sixty meg up. Um, nice. Now five bars of five G. I got that in a couple of places here locally. That you know just hanging out in my hood, not, not trying to find it, you know, it's just available. And, uh, I think it is strapped to T-Mobile here on Google Fi because Google Fi hops carriers. Um, you know, that's just the way the service works. It's kind of a neat mm -hmm. feature. Um, but yeah, um, I, I was impressed. The fastest 5g performance I've seen or sub six 5g, I should say, mm -hmm. um, I've seen, um, on a phone yet now millimeter wave will get you north north of a gig easy i think miriam's seen three gigs when standing right next to a millimeter wave yeah. <laughs> you know radio but that's you know it's pretty few and far between these days still yep. yeah yeah you, you basically have to be at a like some sort of like event center or like dense downtown area where somebody thought hey let's put you know 50 millimeter wave antennas around here so that it works Right, right. It, it'll come though someday. It'll. I think it'll be here more, more pr prevalent. Uh, let's see. We've got a comment from Steve's phones have been fast enough for years that 160 megahertz boost isn't going to be is going to be imperceptible. Well, in the benchmarks, it's not. But uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, and then another comment from uh, from Tim. My headline for forms will be one plus removes a stovetop camera array. <laughs> But I like making popcorn on it. No, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not sure what the headline is going to be look like, but I I was impressed with the One Plus Eleven Five G myself. Um, Marco, you've been silent over there. We've been talking phones uh, that you haven't had your 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 geek mitts on. Any any thoughts before we uh, finish up the the cast here? No, I thought that the, the most important thing, and you guys covered, is the fact that it didn't throttle at all after sustained loops of of you know of that graphics test we saw all of the previous gen like virtually all of them except for i think the red magic that was actively cooled showed a, a steep drop off and yet yeah, some the, the drop off is less than others but to be perfectly flat while maintaining that peak performance and as ryan says the phone doesn't get hot to hold right it's it's not uncomfortable to hold it that's a big deal right that's an experiential uplift and i think that's cool and i'm i'm going to be interested to see if the galaxy uh, performs the same way. So, mm -hmm. you know, the Galaxy might win that first run, but not the 20th run. So we'll, we'll see yeah, how it shakes yeah. out. You know, when, like when, when phones started shipping with uh, active fans, I was like, well, that's silly. You're never going to need that. And now here we are, <laughs> like the fastest phones have fans. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it kind of stinks in that, you know, you, you don't get the, the dust resistance and water resistance. So I would gladly sacrifice a little performance to make sure when I drop the phone in the toilet, I'm still going to get to use it, you know? So <laughs> Don't that's do that, the, ever. Well, yeah, 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 I'm clumsy. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, I'm also an enthusiast, so it's fun to see that, that longest bar on the chart, but yeah yeah man i just dropped a link in the chat to our uh, galaxy s23 series hands-on from miriam uh check that out uh, review is coming there's the trio 
Galaxy S23 Ultra, uh, the S23 Plus, and the S23. Um, uh, design language very similar to the previous gen, uh, but Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 under the hood and some new camera magic and, and all that good stuff. Um, will be very ask, interesting to see. Can I ask a quick Go question? Ahead, Ryan, Ryan yeah? you have your hands on these phones, right? He does, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I have I have, I have, have an S23 Ultra. So I, well. I, I don't, I, I'm still rocking the S20. I think we might have something or, or I misunderstood something at the launch. Does the S22 Ultra have the built-in S Pen or just S Pen support? It it has it built in. Last last year's S twenty two Ultra also had that. Yeah. Okay, so it, it's essentially it, right physically here. physically it's the same then. So it looks it externally looks the same to the the S twenty three then. Uh, it, they are very similar shapes. On oh geez, okay. dropping phone. Whoa. See if I can <laughs> uh, if I can hold if I can hold it. Right, the drop test. Yeah, there you go. You see the shapes are like a little bit. Oh, different. okay. The curve is slightly different. Yeah. Yeah, yep, I actually yep, kind of like the shape of the S22 Ultra a little bit more, but um, I mean, it's it's subtle. It's so subtly different. I don't think it's it's worth being concerned about. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're slippery, See, though. They're slippery phones. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, the um, the OnePlus 11 5G certainly is. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah, the gl most yeah, glossy, glossy back on that phone. Beautiful Although they did phone. just send me the uh, they just sent me the sandstone case. I didn't have this in time to take a picture for the review, but. One plus cases are always fantastic. Still true. Feels like part yes. of the phone and it's super yeah. grippy. Yeah. I got one too in, in the, in the shipping. Thank God. So yeah, it'll, uh, y and you need it because I mean, I, I hate like heck the, the, the green, what do they call it? Uh, Eternal uh, I green, the, I think. E e yeah. Eternal green on the, on the one plus 11 5g. It's a beautiful and it's a nice glossy look, but it's so slippery. You just have to put a case on it. Yeah, um, I, I, I do like Samsung's glass treatment a lot more. It's it's you know it's slick, but it's not like outright slippery. I guess it's 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 a like matte glass. It doesn't even look like glass from a distance. It's neat. Yeah, there you go. There's Miriam uh, giving you the uh, walk around of the uh, Galaxy S23 Ultra and the uh, camera pod on the back, which is uh, you know a little bit more streamlined now. Um, Good stuff. We're going to be uh, treated to the review on that shortly. We'll see how the performance hangs. Uh, what did you What did you see about? Have you seen the the Wildlife Unlimited uh, stress test on the Galaxy S twenty three Ultra yet? Is you said the throttling's uh, a little bit yes, more prevalent? Hold on. Let me, so it's it's the first time I ran it. It was a little bit inconsistent. I don't know if this will show up at all on the on the screen. But oh, there you go. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it drops, you know, it drops a little bit. Uh, I mean, it kind of goes up fuzzy. at the end weirdly. I'm not sure, like, <laughs> there you go. Not sure what's up with that, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. It, it could be, it could be a lot worse. It could, you know, it's better than the S22 was, but it's not like, you know, perfectly even, perfectly flat, you know, like you can't, can't build a skyscraper on top of that line like you can the, the, the uh, OnePlus 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it, as you say, it is, it is pretty pretty level compared to what we've seen previous phones i think that spike at the end is after it got to cool down for a little bit the processor <laughs> said oh hey i got some i got some thermal headroom again let's go um so it, it's interesting man it's really great to see the the thermal management and i think for and we're going long here but i think for uh for qualcomm the move to tsmc with their architecture was a really good move i mean it, it's yeah. really you know snapdragon 8, 8 plus gen 1 was the first chip and that was a good chip and the two was even better so yeah that that first that first snapdragon 8 was pretty toasty it was it was yeah on the samsung 8n process or whatever it was but they dropped down uh, a couple of nodes and went to tsmc and uh, lo and behold we have a very you know well-behaved uh mm -hmm. chip that performs really well so good stuff good stuff and uh i think with that we should probably wrap gentlemen is that is that true marco you're muted See, I'm brain dead. Yeah, no, I, th I think I think it's time to roll. I got to walk a dog over here. <laughs> so we will roll, and we will say, stay tuned in the weeks ahead because we do have we're lining up uh, a gaming rig giveaway shortly uh, with a uh, certain uh, cooling manufacturer that likes to assemble them. Uh, you can find us on the web at Hot Hardware. We're also going to be visiting the guys at Main Gear, building a rig. Uh, on video with them and and the great guys ron reed and uh wallace santos of main gear will be with us i'm sure uh, and a few other guys down there that are great sean and 
at any rate, um, so stay tuned for that. You can find us on the web at hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hothardware, youtube.com slash hothardware. Hit thumbs up, subscribe, please, uh, so you get notified when we uh, when we go stream and hit the reminder bell, of course, and uh, toss a comment in the in the comment section to give this uh, these videos some amplification. And uh, yeah, stick around with us uh, because we'd like to have you with us, right, Marco? Yes, absolutely. The really the most important thing: share it and comment. We we have to break through on YouTube this year. We got to do it, and we need your help to do it. So, get commenting. Yeah, not quite as enough subs. We got like forty thousand subs. We need more. It, we just just need more. That's all. We need another to. zero on the end of that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Ryan, any parting uh, words of wisdom before we sign off? Uh, no, 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 not really. I think I think I'm out, I'm out of wisdom. I, I I did all the wisdom I had. You, you you were you were quite wise today. Thank you for your insight on the phones. Good stuff. It was great chatting with you. Thanks for joining on spur of the moment for, with us. And uh, to everybody else, thanks for joining us as well. And thanks so much for stopping by.